Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. And today we have a long requested video that you guys have been asking for for about a year now. And it is on pedaling. It is absolutely no surprise that pedaling is one of the most confusing and uh, complicated topics in playing the piano because it really can make or break a piece. It can make your playing sound more beautiful or it can make it sound distorted, muddy unclear, all of which leads to it being very confusing. But instead of just saying, oh, just change the pedal at the beginning of every new chord, I thought it'd be more interesting and much more useful for you to actually take the time to take a deep dive into looking at how the pedal works and why we use it in certain situations and what are its multiple applications. I want to take us from the beginning of really understanding what the pedal is made to do and what its design is, and then taking that into a wide variety of applications and even explaining different approaches on how we can utilize this tool to make our playing more effective, more beautiful, more musical, more vibrant. So welcome once again to the first video in this new series on how to pedal. Today we're going to be discussing the very basics of pedaling. And to start off, I wanna clarify some terms. When I say pedal in our application, I mean using the sustain, the rightmost pedal on the piano. Now, what is the primary purpose of the sustain pedal? What is the primary function of the pedal? The question is perhaps a little bit rhetorical because the answer is right in the name, but the purpose of the sustain pedal is to sustain notes. Sustain the notes that we have played, not create new tones, create new notes, create different textures when we're playing. It is primarily to sustain a sound that has already been created. This is main function, this is main purpose, this is main goal. We will deal with the more complicated, more complex things later. And this is also why the pedal is primarily a tool and not a crutch. We use the pedal to do something. We don't lean on the pedal to do things that we can't do otherwise because we haven't developed the skill set to do them. And so our first lesson in learning how to pedal is to pedal less. If you are like most self-taught pianists, you probably started off playing piano immediately using the pedal. And so from the very outset of your learning how to play the instrument, you've always kind of covered a lot of your mistakes some of your phrasing issues. Basically, all the tones that you have generated have all been covered over by this veneer of the pedal. So you, in a sense, don't even understand the very notes that you are playing. And so that's why the first step to learning how to pedal for a lot of people is to pedal less or to stop pedaling altogether. What does this do? First, you are forced to connect for yourself. Connecting for yourself forces you to put your hands in certain positions that enable you to phrase better, that enable you to draw better lines, that teach you how to reach for notes and hold notes and how to connect notes and draw them together into a phrase. In the long run, it will afford you more flexibility with the pedal because you're holding notes as opposed to relying on the pedal Again, that's the same cons of not using the pedal as a crutch, but using it as a tool. You're not relying on the pedal to hold a note for you that you otherwise should have sustained. And that gives you a lot more options on how you can choose to pedalize a certain phrase, a certain area with more complicated things, more advanced techniques that we'll talk about in future videos. And of course, most importantly, when you connect for yourself, you're much more aware of the tone that you are generating. When you can hear the tone that you're producing, you can hear the phrases and the contours that you're drawing, then you can make more informed decisions on how you want to shape your own musicality and develop your own musicality for a certain piece. Pedaling less, secondly, forces you to play cleaner because you can hear all your mistakes as opposed to having it covered up by the pedal. When you're holding the pedal and you're playing wrong notes, it just becomes muddy. But you don't really understand why it's becoming muddy. You don't really understand why certain times it sounds a certain way or other times it sounds a little different. When you stop pedaling, you hear all your issues, all your technical flaws and errors stand out because you're finally able to hear each note on its own. And that's very instructive and very informative for you in learning how to tackle those sorts of technical issues and fixing them so that you can play cleaner and pedal cleaner later. Of course, the third benefit of pedaling less, as we've already touched on with connecting, but it allows you to develop your own phrasing. A lot of times we use pedal to kind of create a tone for us and an ambiance without really understanding how the melody is moving within that. When we pedal less, we're really forced to work the melody because we have nothing else carrying the strength or the musicality of that melody. And so stripping down what you're doing really just enables you to make better decisions, expose your weaknesses and expose your flaws, and learn how to overcome those weaknesses and flaws to become a better pianist. And not only that, but all that gives you more options on how you're going to pedal later when you are able to consider the more advanced things. So how do we practice this? Very simple, just 
play without using the pedal. Play without using the pedal and don't just play to get the notes right, but play in a musical way. Think to yourself and challenge yourself, how can I make this sound as good as possible without using the pedal? How can I make the forte sound as strong? How can I make the connected notes sound as legato? How can I make the really vibrant resonant sections sound large without the pedal? Those are all things that we can do and tackle without the pedal. Now, of course, this would not be a pedaling video if I didn't actually explain how to pedal. People don't really talk about like the main basics to just tell you to pedal on every chord. So we'll start from the beginning. The first step to pedaling is you always want to have your heel on the floor. If your heel does not reach the floor or if your pedal is a little bit high, because I know some electronic pedals are a little bit higher, you can always take a book of sorts and put it on the floor to elevate your heel. Some people even like wearing shoes with a firm sole. I've heard of people using flip-flops, wedges, but high heels in general are a little bit tough. So shout outs to all the pianists who play with heels on. That's crazy to me. Your heel is the point of contact for your foot where you're pivoting force around because it is the fulcrum of your lever. This is what gives you control. This is what gives you stability. If your heel is floating, your leg gets tired, your pedaling is not clean because sometimes you don't come all the way up, sometimes you don't go all the way down. It's just far better to keep your heel firmly on something against the floor. Once you have a comfortable position with your heel against the ground, now all you have to do is just depress your foot, pushing into the pedal, go all the way down, and then come all the way back up. Heel on the floor the whole time. You have successfully used the pedal. And now we're going to take this into our first use of the pedal, which is connecting notes. Right now, I only want you to use the pedal to connect notes that you otherwise find impossible or extremely difficult to do so. Notice that this comes after you've tried to connect it first without the pedal, and so now you're adding pedal to either smooth it over or to assist you in getting it consistent. This is very dependent on your hands, this is dependent on your anatomy, on how you're able to reach for certain things, or what you're comfortable with, but overall, right now, just use the pedal to connect notes. And now we get to perhaps the most unintuitive concept in pedaling, and that is the foot comes down after you generate the tone, and it comes up as you are producing the next tone. My foot comes down to sustain the note after I have played the note initially. Then, when I'm about to play the next note, my foot comes up as my finger depresses down into the next note so that it leaves no gap and the notes are completely connected. And then if I need to connect again, then my foot comes right back down after my finger bottoms out in the key. My favorite way of teaching this or telling students how to practice this is by using chord progressions. So we're gonna go from a dominant seven chord to a tonic chord. Why this is very helpful is because if you bleed the dominant seven chord into the tonic chord, it'll sound very muddy, you'll hear it. Or if you leave a gap, it's also very easy to hear. We'll start in the key of C. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both hands and I'm gonna play the G7 chord, G, B, D, F. Once I play it, I will pause for a second and then I'll depress the the pedal. I'll step down on the pedal and then I'll lift both hands. I will now set my hands over the next chord, which is the C major chord, C, E, G in both hands. When I am ready, I will press down with my hands, simultaneously lifting my foot. And then immediately after I play, I will then depress the pedal again and lift my hands again. And that in essence is how you pedal to connect notes. So one more time, I play the dominant seventh chord, I depress the pedal, I lift my hands, I get ready for the tonic chord. I play the tonic chord while lifting the pedal, and then I depress the pedal and lift my hands. As you get more comfortable with that, you can speed it up. And as you speed it up, be sure to pay attention to make sure that there's no bleed from one chord into the next and that there are no gaps between the chords. Once you've gotten comfortable with this, we can begin to apply this to different pieces. Here, instead of applying it to a whole chord, we're just going to apply to certain notes in the melody. So first, look at the melody. Look for spots that you find difficult to connect. Once you find those, insert pedal between those two notes and listen for smoothness and cleanliness. Again, no bleed and no gaps. Still make the attempt to connect, but use the pedal to smooth it over so that it sounds continuous. Continuous. And you can even practice this by pedaling between each note in the melody, just for practice. And that is the end of the first video on how to pedal. I know we didn't get very far, but I think this is very vital for us to understand before we can move on to more complex topics, simply because this is the foundation of so many things when it comes to pedaling. This is the reason why a lot of people's pedaling is not clean. This is how you get it more clear, and this is how you develop an ear for clear pedaling. There's a time and a place for muddy. There's a time and place for thick textures. There's a time and place for wide, expansive sounds. But right now, what I want you to do is practice playing clean playing thin and playing clearly. So that's gonna do it for this video. Now I also wanna say that part of the process for learning how to pedal involves knowing how to practice efficiently and effectively. So I've created a free guide on how to practice that goes over my methodology and basically the way that I recommend 
that you practice and structure your practice to make it more effective and efficient. It's available down in the description below. If you have any questions about what I talked about in this video, be sure to leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Look out for part two that's coming soon. Be sure to check out my Discord if you would like to talk to me or anyone else in my communities about piano or anything of that nature. And if this was helpful to you, please consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube memberships. Here are more videos that might be interesting to you. And until next time, everybody, peace.